Oh, hey, what's happening there, YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housemade, and today we are going to be hooking up a massive 14 inch, that's 350 millimeter, contact wheel to the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder. Now, if you're not familiar with the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder project, it's a project that I started here on YouTube. We designed, we prototyped it, and ultimately led it to manufacture right here on YouTube, and that is because of you and your support of all of my work right here. It's actually everything I do now. I don't do anything else other than this. Content creation on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, and I make and sell the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder kits. You can check out that project and more. There's all kinds of videos on my YouTube channel right here, or you can go to my website, housemade.us, to find out more. Now, I get this question all the time. Brian, what, what hooks up to the revolution? Will this attachment fit? What do you think about this? Will this work? Uh, pretty much always the answer is yes. Every single attachment that I have purchased, bought, or played with, with some minor modification, will hook right up to the revolution chassis. And that's one of the cool things about this particular system. And today we're going to be hooking up a massive 14 inch contact wheel and I'm super excited about that because the contact wheel, other than the flat platen, is my favorite attachment for the Revolution grinder because it's just such, such an easy thing to hook up and use. And on a daily basis I have a constant need for a, a, a contact wheel and I really just love using it. Now, I've been rocking a 10 inch contact wheel for the last couple of years. And I've noticed a few of my buddies over on the DIY Belt Grinders and Machines Facebook group. If you're not a part of that and you're on Facebook, you should really go join that group. They have purchased 14 inch contact wheels for their grinders. And I, every time I see them, I'm like, oh man, I, I just really <laughs> I want one of those that, you know, to do different kinds of hollow grinds, S grinds and all kinds of things. Now you can buy these contact wheels in the States. Okay. And that's, um, that I, always say, you know, hey, if you can buy American, do it, buy American, but they're pricey, okay? You're gonna spend a lot of money to try to find one locally here in the US. So I did a ton of digging and went online and, and talked to different vendors and manufacturers and found someone on AliExpress that sells them for about half the price of what you can buy one for in the US. And again, whenever I'm doing work like this, I always think to myself, Yes, buy American, support American, but at the same time, not everyone has those kinds of funds, so I look for the most economical path. So down in the description, you're gonna find links for both the American versions and the overseas versions, which uh, we'll find out today if the overseas version actually works right and all of that. There's a few considerations. When you go looking for something like this, you're not gonna be able to find an imperial measurement system on AliExpress, so this one is 350 millimeters in diameter by 50 millimeters wide, which equates approximately to 14 inches in diameter by two inches wide. The other caveat is there's different bearing sizes. So you really need to pay attention to that because uh, in America, we tend to use a half inch axle bolt. In fact, that's my preferred axle bolt for all of my wheels on the Revolution kit. And uh, that would equate to 12.7 millimeters. So when you're buying this, if you go to AliExpress and you click that link and you buy this contact wheel, make sure that you check that 12.7 millimeter internal bearing. That's super important, otherwise it won't fit. Now, if you're uh, a metric person, you're in another country and you're using uh, the metric uh, uh, equivalents, then do whatever you need to do, a 12 millimeter. They make all different kinds of different sizing for that. So you, you can follow that to suit. Uh, so this video today is going to be a tutorial on how to make the tooling arm and the spacer and all of that that would allow for this hookup. And also, I now am making these kit kits as a, uh, it's a tooling arm, a spacer, the bolt, and the actual little washers that kind of slide onto that uh, system in order for you to create your own tooling arm that would allow you to hook up a contact wheel. Uh, I'm just going to make it easy for you guys. You can buy it from me if you want. If you don't want to buy it through me and you have the stuff in your own workshop, I'm going to put a material list down below so you can make your own if you want. Again, I am not a fabrication shop. I can't do the fabrication work for you. You're going to have to work for it and put it together yourself. And that's just uh, you know something you're going to have to do uh, because I just don't have the manpower to do it here. So let's take a look at what you need to actually bolt this thing all up and put it together. Let's put it together and do a review of this contact wheel and maybe we'll even do some grinding. Screw it.
Let's do it. All right, it. let's talk a little bit about what you're going to need to make this happen. As far as tooling goes, you're going to need a half inch 13 tap or whatever respective tap that you're using. If you're like going to set it up for an M12 or whatever, just be aware that you're going to need a tap for that and a drill bit that corresponds with that. In my case, this is a 27 64ths drill bit. And uh, yeah, I can hear the metric guys going, huh? Like what? <laughs> How do we all keep this straight? I'll have no idea, but yes, 27 64 drill bit uh, corresponds with a half inch 13 tap. A tap handle of some kind. Uh, for a long time, I was always using those cheap tap handles that came with like my cheap kits that I got and then I graduated to the Starrett. You can buy these on Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description. They're a little pricey, but I gotta tell you, this is one sexy tap handle. If you do a lot of tapping, it's really nice to have one of these. So, and then the last thing I, you should probably have is some Loctite 242. This is removable Loctite, meaning if you warm it up, it will release. So I kind of like that feature, but it does lock down like regular Loctite. So in the kit, I'm gonna provide you with a tooling arm of the proper length, a cube of one inch square bar stock. This is gonna provide us with the proper spacing for our bolt. And then I'm gonna provide you with a three and a half inch long, half inch 13 bolt. This is gonna serve as the axle and a couple of these really nice brass spacers. And these are the same spacers that I use in the Revolution kit. Uh, I like these because they don't wear down as fast and they do protect the inner race of these bearings that are in the wheel. This is the wheel that I got from AliExpress, 350 millimeters across by 50 millimeters wide, okay? And that equates to about 14 inches and two inches, okay? Um, overall construction seems really nice, seems pretty uh, solid. All the aluminum seems pretty great. The machining's not the best, but it's gonna get messed up anyway. And the bearings are look pretty good and they spin okay. The one downside of this is that they do not have the internal spacer that goes between both bearings. So there's a bearing on this side and there's a bearing on this side in between them is nothing, no, nothing, no space or no nothing. And that means that when you thread in your axle bolt, that there's a possibility of side load in here. And that's why we use these brass spacers and the Loctite. So we'll make sure that we don't over tighten this bolt when we put it in. And that way it won't side load those bearings, okay? It's not ideal, but again, this is a, about a half price a deal on this wheel. So. We can get around it with a little creativity and make it work. Okay, so let's take all this over to the welding table and get set up because the first step is we are going to weld this spacer onto the tooling arm. All right, so we've got our tooling arm here and I this is a standard 16 inch tooling arm, but I have a suspicion we're gonna be able to cut this down, probably somewhere around 12, 13 inches. So that will be what gets shipped in the kits. So this is my first time building one of these for a 14 inch contact wheel. So I'm thinking around 12, 13 inches will be about right, but I'm gonna wait on that until I get this all built and then we can match it up to the machine. So we've got our spacer here. We've got a tooling arm, not rocket scientry. We are going to clamp it down to the table and weld it into place. And I'm not gonna get too critical on its location because really this is not a critical dimension just as long as you've got the piece on the end or close to it. C-clamp works great for this application. I've been experimenting with this anti-spatter stuff uh, from Cantesco and I'm really liking it. Uh, you spray it on and essentially it gives you a nice clean weld. So some of you flux core guys may want to look into this. I'll put a link down in the description so you can find it. But it's, uh, I get it on Amazon. Yeah, it's just anti-spatter. Spray it on and it makes a nice clean weld. In this case, I'm going to make it a nice hot weld. So on my Hobart welder, I've got it set to five because I want good penetration. And 
uh, weld. Put one on all, all sides. That anti-spatter spray has like a, almost like a fryer oil smell to it. I don't know exactly what's in it, but reminds me of the carnival. There we go. Good enough for government work. Now we want to find center of this block because we're going to drill and tap a hole into it. And I'm just going to mark it across the way here. Again, not a super critical dimension, so we're not going to get really into the precision of this because it does not matter. Also, these uh, markers that I've been getting from Milwaukee, these, what do they call these, ink saws, are amazing. This steel is probably like 500 degrees and it's still road on it. So, yeah, this thing's hot. But, uh, yeah, find these on Amazon or you can get them at... Um, Northern Tool, I think, too, but or pretty much anywhere, any tool store, I guess. But yeah, these things are amazing. Okay, so we are all set up to drill this hole. Now, if you don't have a mill, you're definitely going to want to drill a pilot hole, all right, because it's really important that this is. A 90 degrees off you know your hole should be exactly 90 degrees or very close to it uh, I have a mill so I've kind of got a nice scenario here that I can drill and tap this hole with ease but yeah with a drill press do a quarter inch pilot hole or something first one of my favorite tools for chamfering is this single fluted chamfer fantastic little tool get it on Amazon I'll put a link down in the description great great addition. I have a couple of them. I have the small 3 8 version for smaller holes and then I've got the 3 quarter version for bigger holes. So I love these things and they're cheap. Okay, real quick, let's talk taps for a second. Um, I have two different types of taps. The, these are very different, and I, my favorite is this kind of tap. I'll put a link down in the description to these. They're really easy to start. They cut really clean, and I really dig them. I was turned on to these by Richard Beck over at Beck's Armory. The one thing I don't particularly like about these is that the threads don't seem to be as clean. So if you really need a good strong bond uh, between the bolt and the receiver. This is not, uh, the, in my opinion, the best way. So what I like to do is I like to start with this because it's a much easier tap to get started and get started straight and then finish my tapping with this, which is just a traditional, you know, uh, standard tap. And I always, always, always use tap magic Whenever I am tapping or drilling anything, it is excellent cutting oil. You can see how those little threads come out of there. It's pretty, pretty neat. And I like that a lot. That gets, that's getting us started there. And then we'll switch over to a traditional tap. Now when you're tapping, really important, just take your time. Because it's, it's gonna take you a lot longer to rebuild the piece and dig out a broken tap than it would just to actually take some time and you know create a good proper tap. So and I went all the way through. So I drilled and tapped all the way through this. So now we've got a pretty awesome spacer. That is threaded. Look at those beautiful threads. I love the smell of tap magic in the morning. Also, look at how nice and clean those welds came out using that anti-spatter spray. There's still a little bit of spatter in there, but it's nothing crazy.
crazy. You know, I'm a solid core welder guy. I use a Hobart handler 190, but uh, those are definitely really clean. I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to keep using that anti-spatter stuff. I would only imagine and make flux core look great as well. So something to think about. All right, so we've got the Revolution set up to receive the new tooling arm here. We've got our Loctite, we've got our bolt with our spacers in it. And the rest is pretty much self-explanatory, but you know, we'll walk through it anyway. Um, I'm not gonna put any Loctite on this until I know for sure that I've got my tensioning set correctly and I've got my bolt uh, all kind of lined up and everything working properly. Then we'll take it back apart and apply the the Loctite, so we'll just set that aside. Thread the bolt in the way we showed you in the beginning of the video with a spacer. Put a spacer on the other side. I'm gonna thread this thing right up. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> this is a half inch bolt, so a three quarter wrench. We'll tighten that down. You don't want, like I said in the beginning, you don't want it too tight. Just need it tight enough to where there's no play in the in the actual wheel itself so just feel it and if there's no shake you're good to go all right let's throw a belt on this thing and see if we can get it to track make a couple of minor adjustments here Well, I'm going to say that's a success. Not a lot of vibration, surprisingly, for as large of a wheel as this is. And it uh, tracked just fine with just a minor adjustment to the tracking mechanism. And wow. A couple of things I was feeling for were the bearings, if they were getting hot, they were not. So that's a good sign. I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to trim down that tooling arm to about 13 inches. Put it all back together, put some Loctite on this, and do some grinding. Does anybody know why blue Loctite comes in a red container? If you know, put it down in the comments, would you? That has been bugging me for a long time. So one of the things I did do was I put the tooling arm for this big wheel in the lower receiver, which would normally be where the work rest would go. That just gave me a little bit more workability here. Now that's just my preference. You could put it in the upper receiver tube if you like, but yeah, it actually feels better to me in the lower receiver. Well, as you can see, it grinds pretty nice. I still have a lot of work to do on my uh, hollow grinds here, but uh, yeah, I think with a little bit of practice, I'm gonna be able to nail that down pretty good. I'm super impressed so far and cannot wait to see what I can make with this in my workshop and studio. So a couple things to consider if you're interested in purchasing the tooling arm kit for a contact wheel, go to my website, housemade.us and just uh, ensure that it will fit up to your particular 2x72 belt grinder. Uh, if you have a Revolution, we know it works, right? And I am super impressed with the quality of that thing for the price. There are links for all the tools and the supplies and all the things I used in today's video down below. Those are affiliate links, and if you click through to those, you buy something, it doesn't cost you any extra and it helps support my channel. I do truly appreciate all the support I have been given over the last couple of years right here on YouTube. 
and it's the reason I have transformed my life and I am full of gratitude to you for helping me do that. So thanks again, guys. I truly appreciate it. If you got something out of today's video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you click that little bell, you get a notification every time I upload something to YouTube. There's many ways to support my channel. There's Patreon, there's Buy Me A Coffee. You can go to my website, housemade.us, buy pieces, parts, and plans for the Revolution 2x72 Bell Grinder Project. You can comment on this video and tell me how much you liked it. That's also considered support. So I truly appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House, and this has been Housemade.